Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be factoring a giant polynomial. Now, why did I call that giant? It only has three terms, right? Well, because of the 13th power that we have here, we have to deal with this. So this is not a standard polynomial. Uh, like uh, it's not like a difference of two squares or difference of two cubes or, you know, something like that. It's not very standard. So we're going to use a non-standard approach. That's what makes this problem more interesting. Now, we used a similar approach in another problem. I can include the link down below in the description. So you can go ahead and check that out as well. So what am I going to do? I am going to subtract x to the power something from this. But I want that thing to be useful, right? So here's what I'm going to do. And you might be questioning, like, why am I doing it, right? You'll find out. In a little bit, you'll find out why I do that. Okay, but that's the trick to it, okay? That's the trick to solving this type of problem. So I'm going to start by manipulating the x to the power 13. So I'm going to write it as x to the power 13 minus x to the power 10. Obviously, we don't have x to the 10th power, so we're just going to have to add that one, right? So I'll end up with something like this, okay? So I have to add back to x to the 10th power. Okay, now here's the thing. If I can factor this and I can factor this and they have a common factor, then I'm done. Isn't that cool? That's the fact, right? Okay, so I can give you a good example to this one. For example, suppose you had the following problem x cubed plus x squared minus 12. Okay, this might look like an unusual polynomial, but it's easy to factor. So I can write this as x cubed minus 8 plus x squared minus 4. Now, obviously, this is factorable and it contains x minus 2. And this is factorable and it contains x minus 2. So now they have a common factor, which is good, right? That's what I'm looking for. But this one is still big. So I'm going to keep breaking it down until I get something nicer. Let me continue. Okay. X to the 11th power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract X to the 8th from it. Maybe you already seen what I'm doing here. And then add the X to the 8th. So now I'm hoping that this X to the 10th power something is factorable. And hopefully these two are factorable and then they have a common factor. Well, what is the idea here? Take a look at this. If you take out X to the 10th, you get x to the third minus one. You get the idea? If you take out x to the eighth, you get the same thing. So these two definitely have a common factor. So let's go ahead and proceed. At the end, you'll see a surprise. Okay, so my next step is, and I will change the thickness here a little bit. My next step is going to be breaking this down even more. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the x to the 10th and write it as minus x to the 7th. And then I'll use x to the 8th plus x to the 7th plus 1. And I'll continue to do this. x to the 13th minus x to the 10th plus, okay, x to the 11th minus x to the 8th plus x to the 10th minus x to the 7th plus. Now, what am I going to do here? I'll use the same strategy, x to the 8th minus x to the 5th. Maybe you already seen what I'm doing so far. x to the 5th, x to the 7th, and 1. Okay, awesome. Let's continue. Now, notice that I'm getting like groups of 2 here, which are factorable, and they all have the same factor. But we always have uh, three terms left at the end, right? So we have to figure that out. So I'll continue to break this down. I would like to break it down even more to a point where it's manageable, right? Let's see where it's going to give up. Okay, so x to the seventh from that, I will subtract x to the fourth. And then I will end up with x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus one. Obviously, this is a lot of writing and this is just the way to do it. Obviously, there are other ways to look at it too, which I can tell you later. Not now. Okay, all right, let's continue. So this one will just be copied over x to the 8th, x to the 10th, x to the 7th, x to the 8th, x to the 5th. Notice that 
they're all three apart, which is nice, right? Now we'll do the same thing here. And this is kind of where it breaks down. I can safely say that, okay, we're nearing the end here, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is subtract x squared, and that leaves us with x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. Beautiful. Now, look at these terms now. You're going to notice something interesting about all these terms. So let's go ahead and mark them. These two, these two, these two, these two, these two, and these two all have a common factor. And we know that it's x cubed minus one. The question is, does this guy have x cubed minus one? I doubt it, but we'll find out in a little bit what happens with that one. All right, let's go ahead and proceed. Since this one has x cubed minus one, but there's an x to the 10th in front of it, so it's gonna look like this. This one is going to look like this. And the third one is going to look like this. Notice the similarities. And then this one, x to the eighth, we take out x to the fifth. We always take out the smaller one, if you haven't noticed. And then I will go with, okay, where am I? x to the eighth, let's not get lost. x to the fourth, x cubed minus one plus x squared, x cubed minus one. Okay, it's, it doesn't even fit on the row, right? So what do I have left? I have x to the fourth plus x squared plus one left. Okay, this is left. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is since they all have this term, I'm going to take that out. It's going to simplify the process. Let's go ahead and do it. I'll take out x cubed minus one, which is a common factor for many, many terms here. So this is going to give me x to the 10th plus x to the 8th plus x to the 7th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th plus x squared. Obviously, they don't, they're do not they not consecutive integers. They skip, okay? So that's kind of interesting too. Now, this is how far we can go with this. And then I just have to attach the other piece, which is a core tick here, but we'll take care of that here. Okay, now, how am I going to take care of that? Well, this, I think it came up in another problem uh, and we solved it the same way, similarly. So this is actually uh, can be this can be written as a difference of two squares. How so? Well, I can write it as this x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one minus x squared, right? Because of the x squared can be written as two x squared minus x squared. Now, what I have in parentheses is actually a perfect square. So I can write it as x squared plus one squared minus x squared. Beautiful. Now, what is so good about writing it as a difference of two squares is it makes it factorable. So I can write it as x squared plus 1 plus x and x squared plus 1 minus x. Beautiful. Now, that cortic was factored, but what does this have to do with the rest of the expression, right? That's the critical part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange these terms a little bit so you can see better. Hopefully, it's going to be more clear now x squared minus x plus 1 multiplied by x squared plus x plus 1. Awesome. Now, this is my cortic, the additional terms. And I do have a giant expression, two parentheses, two sets. And then uh, it's kind of factored, right? I say kind of because x cubed minus 1 can still be factored. And guess what? It can be factored as what? Difference of two cubes. You'll hopefully remember that. So let's bring this guy down here as x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. Beautiful. And the rest of it is just going to follow x to the 10th, x to the 8th, x to the 7th, plus x to the 5th, plus x to the 4th, plus x squared. Awesome. Then our expression comes here plus x squared plus x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. Do you see what I see? Okay, hopefully you do. And here we go. I have x squared plus x plus 1 and x squared plus x plus 1. This was our goal, to get a common factor at the very end, and we did. So, and there's a reason behind it. Again, like, I don't want to get into that right now because I want to keep this video short. Let's get this over with. Let's get it done. So, my common factor is going to be then x squared plus x plus 1 
And the other factor is going to come from the product of these two things, right? Obviously, inside the brackets, I'm going to have this times x minus 1. I don't know if I want to distribute that right now. Maybe just write it and then distribute later. Let's see how that goes x to the 7th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th plus x squared. This ends here. And then plus, I have the x squared minus x plus 1. Awesome. So what I need to do now is just go ahead and distribute and arrange and we'll be done. Okay, so my first factor is going to be x squared plus x plus 1, which is what matters the most. And then here, let's see what happens. Well, I'm going to be getting like 11th power, you know, like uh, ninth power, so on and so forth. You can arrange it, but that's no big deal. So let's go ahead and write it down. x to the 11th, if I go ahead and distribute that, plus x to the 9th, plus x to the 8th, plus x to the 6th, plus x to the 5th, plus x cubed, and then I'll subtract the negative 1, minus x to the 10th, minus x to the 8th, minus x to the 7th, minus x to the 5th, minus x to the 4th, minus x squared, and then plus this one, right? Which is x squared minus x plus 1. Now, what's going to happen is that some of the, these terms are going to cancel out. For example, x squared and x squared is going to cancel out. Uh, we don't have an x here, so we can just go ahead and rearrange it and write the final result and wrap it up. Okay, so I get x to the 10th from here, and I think I made a mistake here. This should be an x to the power 9, right? Yeah, that's definitely wrong. So it should be like, okay, oh, x to the 10th power... Uh, we have, no, we don't have x to the, okay. So interestingly, uh, some terms are going to cancel out. Let's see what, which ones do. For example, x to the eighth is going to cancel out. Do I have x to the fifth? Yep, I do. They're going to cancel out. x to the ninth is not going to cancel out. Uh, we don't have x to the tenth. We don't have x to the sixth here. x cubed is not going to cancel out. Uh, and everything else is going to stay. Okay, so let's go in and arrange this in... Uh, Descending order, x to the ninth. Oh, we have the tenth first. Never mind. All right, let me fix that. Minus, wait a minute. Okay, this should be an x to the eleventh. What am I talking about? Okay, so we start with x to the eleventh, and then we go to minus x to the tenth. So here and here, and then we have x to the ninth here, and then we have we don't have x to the eighth, but we have minus x to the seventh right here, and then we have x to the sixth plus here, and then no x to the fourth. We do have minus x to the fourth. And then we have plus x cubed minus x plus 1. All right, that's it. This is the answer to our original polynomial. And if you didn't forget, that was x to the power 13 plus x to the power 11 plus 1. So we were able to factor it using a non-standard method. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And see you in the next video, which is a geometry puzzle. Bye-bye.